said, how many know it's a good day to be in the house of the law? For one writer said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And I am glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight. We give honor to your pastor and his lovely wife. Thank you so much for allowing us to be in the house of the Lord with you. Glad to see some of the TPH folk made their way out to support their pastor tonight. God bless you. Thank you. See some of my ministry staff here. Thank you so much. Amen. It's not every day you get to take a musician with you, but I'm glad I got the best in the city of Indianapolis. No offense, brothers. No offense. But I tell you, I'm a worshiper before I'm a preacher. You have to be a worshiper before a preacher. God always had worshipers before he had a man of God standing behind a podium. I told him today and uh, while we was taking the offering, I said, you know, Abraham said, we're going to take me and the lad and go up and worship. He didn't say I was going to go preach a sermon. But he said, we didn't know, the child didn't know it was going to be a sacrifice. But at that moment, Abraham knew whatever God desired from me, I want to give it to God. Why? Because I want to be pleasing in his sight. Does anybody want to be pleasing to God? Now, you have to forgive my raspy voice. I just got finished preaching just an hour and a half or so ago. And so I just got out of church. But the residue is still there, Pastor. And I feel it in the house. Just say, I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Is that all right? I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you. Come on, if you know it, just lift it up to the Lord. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Come on, lift it up to it. Just 
just embraced me where I was. And I have to tell the Lord I love him. I love my wife, but I love him more. I love what he's blessed me with, but if I didn't have any of those things, as long as I've got Jesus, feeling good tonight. I feel sorry for y'all. I'm feeling good. Can we just lift our hands and worship?
know that I'll go all night. Yes. Yes. Psalm chapter 126 and 1. I come from the old school, so I'm used to having church late. So. <laughs> Psalm 126 and verse 1. When you get that, say amen. amen. Again, of course, we give honor. My wife sends her greetings. She's with her father this evening. She wanted to be here, but we're thankful that we made it on out. Saints of God, there's a word in the house tonight. Come on. But we can't just be hearers. We got to be doers also. Amen. Psalm chapter 126, starting in verse 1. When you get there, can you say amen? Amen. Word of the Lord reads this. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. If I could just for a few moments, and I'm going to get comfortable, so you all going to have to forgive me if you don't like it. Love me now, hate me later. Don't bother me now. But I'm going to preach from this thought for just a few moments. You can dream again. All right. You can dream again. If you're holding your Bibles, could you place them in your seat behind you? And we do it in our house as we lift our hands toward heaven as we ask God to bless the word of the Lord. Can we do that? I'm not going to pray in this microphone. you got to have a relationship for yourself. Can you ask God to bless the word tonight? God, let the anointing, God, let the destroys you. You'll fulfill this tabernacle. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I give you thanks for your word tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of a living God. I was reading a story recently about a man who was started his business during the Great Depression. And this gentleman was a half a million dollars in debt from his venture. And it seemed like he was going to lose it all, but thought through the whole story I read. He continually said, and I kept on dreaming. Uh -huh. This man became world renowned as one of the greatest pioneers in the hotel industry, none other than Conrad Hilton. Yes. I understand, ladies and gentlemen, tonight that the society of our economic crisis that we are in we are experiencing today has placed a hold on the body of Christ. But I came tonight with a word from the Lord to let you know that God has still given you a dream. Bear with me, I promise I'll preach. And God is wanting somebody to know not to let the devil steal that dream again. I don't care how bad life gets. I don't care how bad it seems at the moment. Yes. I don't care how far down in the dumps you might feel this evening. <laughs> the enemy of your soul is trying to destroy you. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're not used to apostolic preaching, you're going to get it. But I'm sure I've heard this man over here. I think he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> so if I spit and holler a little bit, don't get scared. Back in my day, they were snotting and everything. <laughs> but tonight, I want somebody to know that there's a dream on the inside of you that God wants to resurrect. The text here says, when the Lord. Now, I like that because it did not say if the Lord. There is a big difference between the word when and if. It said, when the Lord. 
The first thing I want you to understand tonight, that it is not a matter if God is going to bring the dream to pass. It's a matter of when God's going to bring the dream to pass. Yes, sir. Saints of the living God, I want you to understand there are two winds when it comes to God. There is a spiritual wind and there is a natural wind. The spiritual wind is when you release your dream to God. When you dare to dream greater than where you currently are at this moment in your life. The second wind is when it manifests in the natural. But we need to understand the first wind is the most important. Because you must understand that God is an eternally now God. Albert Einstein calculated the speed of light to go some 160,000 miles or more per second. 700 million miles per hour. Now if light can go that fast, I don't know much about light. I, I'm just glad I can turn a switch on. But if he can calculate that, something in my spirit has to say that when he calculated that, I read that time slows down the faster it goes. I don't know about natural time, but I do know this. John chapter 8 and verse 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. In other words, when I come in contact with the presence of a living God, I come in contact with a God that is eternally now. That's the reason why I praise Him the way I praise Him. That's the reason I don't mind to cut a step and you can watch. That's why I don't mind screaming my head off and running. I come from an hour in church. I don't know about, I, I, we run the aisles at our church and I don't mind having to get down that aisle and tell the Lord I'm going to take a lap. Because if Joshua can fight and scream at the walls of Jericho, I ought to be able to run around every devil that's making fun of me and say, I still got a dream and I'm running for my life and I believe God's going to make it come to pass. This was funny, y'all. I'm getting ready to close. My musician gonna help me. I don't preach long. <laughs> I believe that when I claim something, I don't wait 50 years to receive it. God is an eternally now God. Therefore, when I claim it in the spirit realm, it's already done. All I've got to do is wait for it to manifest in the natural. Therefore, that's why the Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall run and not be weary. Why won't you get weary while you're running? Because it's already done in heaven. It just ain't in the natural. Help me out, Brother Golden. Come on. I feel like preaching. I don't know about you, but when I need something from God, is coming soon church and you better get ready that's why when I say I need something from God I know I serve a right now God that means I ain't waiting for my promise tomorrow God if you said it I believe it I want it now somebody shout now in this place come on you're going to do what I'm doing my church turn around and high five your neighbor and tell them I'm going to get it right now I'm going to get it right now I'm not playing games with the devil any longer steal my joy any longer I've got a promise from the Lord and his promises are yay and amen I've got a right now word I'm a dreamer he's a right now God with a right now word in your right now situation when it looks like all hell has broke loose and every devil in hell is rising its head up against you. And you don't know which way is up. I can hear my grandmama say when you hit rock bottom, thank God for the rock. Sometimes you may hit rock bottom and you don't know which way to look. All you got to do is look up for your redemption joy. Get your eyes off the world and get your eyes off of the ungodly. He said look unto Jesus who is the author. I feel like preaching and the finisher of your faith. I don't know what you came in this house with tonight, but God is a right now God. 
substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. Somebody shout now. Psalms 18 and 35 says, Save now, O Lord. I beseech you, send now prosperity. God's not intended for you to be broke, but God's got money that the Bible said has been stored up with the wicked that he's ordained for us. Y'all can look at me crazy all you want to, but I came with a word today to tell you, keep your dream alive. And Martin Luther King was here. He said, keep the dream alive. Don't you dare let the devil kill your dream. I don't care what the devil may say. I'm going to run this race. I've got a race that is set before me. I'm looking. I'm searching. I'm feeling after the dream. I don't know about you today, but you need to tell God now. It's the acceptable year of the Lord. I will receive what God has ordained for me. somebody I'm going to get it right now they didn't look like they wanted to talk to you look at your other neighbor tell them I'm going to get it right now if they've been looking like they've been chewing on lemons and gunpowder look at somebody else and tell them I'm going to get it now some of you need to put a smile on your face Hallelujah. You want to know how you were defeated? It's when you can't get behind stuff like this. When you can't get behind the dream, Pastor. When you can't get behind the vision. It's all about me, 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 me. Poor pitiful me. Well, let me tell you something. I can care less about you. You didn't die for me. You didn't rise for me. And you didn't fill me with the Holy Ghost. But I'm telling you what I feel in this house. There's a dream that God's trying to give birth to. And some of you are in the way of the birth. And I'm telling you, either get with the birth or move on out. He didn't tell me, but I'm telling you under the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you tonight, there's something in the birth canal that needs to be pushed out in this house. And if you ain't going to help push, then you want to push yourself on out the back door and take your ride on home or take your happy steps out of here and take a seat but let me tell you something today there is a dream that God is trying to give birth to and I came as the prophet of God in this house to tell you either give birth to the dream or get out of the way you don't have to have it back I just gave your pastor permission he don't have to have me back after the night but sometimes you have to recognize that the dream is bigger than you the dream is bigger than your dream God's got a dream for the kingdom yes he wants us to do what we've got to do for the kingdom but there comes a point where you're going to have to put yourself on the side and say God whatever your will is I want your will God nevertheless the word says not my will but thy be done Jesus himself prayed that prayer in the flesh and I came to tell you sometimes the flesh mother gets in the way it doesn't want us to let the dream come to pass but I came to tell you today you better crucify the flesh tonight and tell the dream it's coming alive in this house tonight I'll never be the same again I'm walking out of here with apostolic authority and understanding the dream will come to pass with you or without you 
I don't want to preach too long. I done wore off my degrees and everything else up here. They don't smell it too much. But I came with a word tonight. Pastor, I preach today and, 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 and you preach some of those messages you understand. People don't catch it right then. But when they get home and they start thinking on the word, then they'll start catching. Oh, now I know what Pastor meant. <laughs> I preach today sitting at the table of brokenness. <laughs> and I was telling the story about a little girl who found a cocoon in a tree. And she put it in a jar and she put it in her bedroom window sill, waiting to see the birth of this butterfly. And the poor girl in her innocence saw one little crack in the butterfly's cocoon. So she said, well, why don't I just help the butterfly out and open it a little more? But what she did not understand in her innocence, it is the struggle that helps the butterfly come out to what it needs to be. She didn't understand by breaking open the cocoon that now that butterfly is damned to walk all the days of its life instead of fly and soar where God intended it to be. I came to tell somebody tonight the dream sometimes is hard. Sometimes there's a struggle that comes with the dream. But in the midst of the struggle is where your strength comes from. He said when you're weak, that's when I'm made strong. He said it's in your weakness where I can do my best work. I don't know about you tonight, but God told me to tell you it's time to spread your wings and come up out of this cocoon. It's time for you to rise up to where God has ordained you to be. Quit sitting on the back row and let God move you into greater. There's greatness in this house. And I dare somebody to say, I want to be a part of that greatness. God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. God will always make good on his word. He ain't like us. I'll be there, Pastor. Y'all don't show up. I'll clean, Pastor. Yeah, right. I'm sure there's men and women of God like this in this place, but sometimes saints of God think it's always the pastor's job to do everything. You got some. <laughs> I'm going to admit it because none of them are here. I got some. But I got men and women in this room that will see my wife from me pushing a vacuum cleaner and taking out our hands real quick. They want to know we, we got the dream too. Is it all right if I come down? I'd get a little crazy if I get off the roof and I'm going to come on down. There comes a moment where you have to understand that is more than just his vision. Come on. Right. Right. He's the visionary. Right. Yeah. But you're the hands and the feet to the vision. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you ain't going to move with the vision, mm -hmm. that's why they have knee replacements now. Okay. 
go back up here, we're safe. I don't care how big your church is. I don't care how big your choir is. I don't how bad care how great your musician is. And I don't care if you can preach. But if you ain't got the dream that God has given you, you ain't got nothing. I'm from the south. We're gonna have to make it y'all get a little southern talk in here in a minute. But I'm telling you what, I'm sick and tired of seeing churches in the limelight and in the glow, but ain't got a lick of anointing and ain't got a lick of deliverance. The Holy Ghost caught me. I'm about to set a church's name. See, God is good. Let me stick to my notes while I get in trouble. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. I'm going to be good tonight. I don't want anybody reporting to my wife what I said tonight. Hebrews 13 and 8 said, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So I came with a word tonight. The dream is not dead. It's just needing somebody to breathe some life back into the dream. I don't know about you, but if God has healed you once before, what makes you think he can't heal you again? If God delivered you once before, what makes you think God can't deliver you again? I don't know about you, but I'm telling you there is a God that still delivers today. He still delivers from nicotine. He still delivers from fornication. Yeah, he may not ask me back now. God will still deliver you from an adulterous spirit. I'm telling you what, the dream cannot have sin in the midst of it. God will not have a contaminated bride and he won't have a contaminated church. God's trying to tell somebody it's time to go it's time to come up out of the muddy grubs and it's time for you to step up to where God has called you to. If God's called you to be a preacher, preach the word of God. Be instant in season and out of season. If God's called you to be a singer, sing your best song. Even if you can't sing, keep on singing. You'll get it right sometime. If God called you to be a musician, you play until your fingers bleed. If it's going to the glory, Is about 
when a woman gives birth, hopefully there's no children in here, praise the Lord, that a water has to break first. I came to tell you, the water is about to break in this house, and the baby's in the birth canal, and he's looking for men and women to push this thing out. God, I feel like preaching. I don't know about you, but you ought to touch your belly and say, come on, baby. Come on, baby. inside of you and the devil wants to kill the dream the devil wants to snuff out the dream within you I hope I'm all right but the Bible tells us to lay aside every weight and the sin they ain't the same that's easily beset us and run this race I don't know what's keeping you from the dream tonight it could very be the person sitting next to you y'all gonna have to I'm just a little crazy so y'all gonna have to forgive it it might be your spouse it might be your child it might be depression it might be a disease but whatever it is, you better conquer it tonight. All right, all right. Hallelujah. Because right. nobody in this room is promised tomorrow. All right. All right. Right. But I'll tell you this, the dream will not die when you go. Because right. somebody else, God will raise up to carry the dream and bring it to pass. Oh, yeah. I don't know what kind of dream God has birthed in you. It might be a ministry tonight. I feel the Holy Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> It might be a ministry working with children. It might be the praise team. It might be preaching. I don't know, but I know this. The dream will happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The prophet went through all of David's brothers yes. before he got to David. Yes. Yes. And God likes the ones that don't nobody really know about. Mm -hmm. That are ready to tend to the sheep mm -hmm. than to worry about who's in the house. And who's getting the blessings? Right. And who's making the most? Right. Amen. But 
God likes those that are working in the field, stinking. Right. Like up here tonight. Yeah. Working in the field, trying to see souls saved. And starting to stand in front of crowds of thousands of people to just get a dollar to make them holler at somebody. But it's showing Jesus. And I'm telling you tonight under the unction of the Holy Ghost. That if you don't get a hold of this dream tonight and overcome whatever you got to overcome. Under the unction of the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you the dream will pass you by tonight. Yeah. The dream will leave you and find another person to give birth to the dream. <laughs> but you got to learn how to kill some things off first. Amen. Oh God, let me step back here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm done. But I tell you what, I feel in the Holy Ghost. I don't know how you do altar call. Am I doing altar call? Come on. Okay. <laughs> Check first, sorry. <laughs> I don't know about you. But this altar area is open for people who are willing to give birth to the promise. For people who are willing to give birth to the dream that God has placed in this man and woman of God. Yes, hallelujah. Now I'm gonna put you on the spot tonight. Because I'm good like that. Amen. They will know with this altar call. Who's with them yeah. and who's not? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I told you you're gonna love me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But the dream has to come to pass. Yes, it does. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This man and woman of God shouldn't have to pour their sweat, blood, and tears into something for you to milk. This ain't a cow, and if you want milk, go to the grocery store. 